If you're listening to this podcast, it probably is because you love plants, not just for their gorgeous aesthetic or the nutritious food that they provide, but because there's something deeper there with your connection to plants, a connection that transcends words, kind of, that caring for plants makes you happier, makes you feel calmer, more joyful. Obviously, the name of the show is called Growing Joy. The girls who get it, get it. But plants are so much more than decor pieces in our home. They're tools that we can use to lead happier lives and connect with ourselves and our intuition on a deeper level. In a time where we are so overstimulated, so overscheduled, so overwhelmed with the 24-7 news and email and social media, it is so hard to get quiet and remember who the heck we truly are, our essence. And plants can be a way to help us get there again, not only to remember ourselves, but to remember that we're part of something greater than ourselves. We are nature. We are connected to nature and all things that are nature. So today's episode is not about growing plants, but it's about growing ourselves through plant care and through connection to plants to live a more rooted, connected life. Welcome. Welcome to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives by doing so. I'm Maria, former plant killer turned happy plant lady, author of Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, your new best plant friend. On Growing Joy with Plants, you'll find conversations about houseplant care, gardening tutorials, and wellness through the lens of plants. Plant care is self-care on Growing Joy. Hello, hello, my plant friends. Welcome back to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast. I'm Maria, your best plant friend. I'm so honored that I get to make this podcast for you on a weekly basis. Whether you're new here or you're returning, I am so honored to be part of your planty journey. Now, the majority of this podcast is all about plant care, right? So how to care for plants successfully. But the real mission in my life is to make the world a kinder and greener place through plant care. Because once we get success in plant care out of the way, once we know how to care for plants, that's where the good stuff, the real work gets to happen. Because that's where this world of connection and joy kind of gets opened up to us. And I know you know what I'm talking about. It's why I wrote my whole self-help book called Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness. And it's why I'm so determined to put all of this free educational content out to empower you to have these joyful experiences. And that's why I love today's guest, Raquel, from Our Infinite Nature. You've heard her before. She just rebranded. She used to be our infinite succulent. She was our guest for our plant magic episode. She was our guest for our succulent crown episode. She was our green witch on our recent episode on how to be a green witch. And I've decided that Raquel is going to be our resident green witch. We're going to have her come on the show occasionally to talk about how to cultivate an even deeper relationship with our plants beyond plant care. And today we're going to talk about how we can use plants to cultivate a deeper connection with our intuition and how to remember our own magic through plant care. I personally have been on this journey privately to deepen my spiritual connection to my more magical self. And I recently took Raquel's 10-week course on cultivating your intuitive gifts. And plant friends, it really changed me. The course focuses in more on intuitive gifts and magic, but it's very rooted in nature and plants. And it really, at the end of it, had me thinking, why isn't this stuff taught in school? I feel so much better after taking this course. The lens that I'm looking out at at the world is so much more joyful and open and optimistic than it was before I took the course. And I was so moved by the course material that I asked Raquel if she would come on and kind of give you guys a 101 intro to it because I really feel like the tools that she teaches are so valuable and have personally impacted me so positively in my life. You hear Frankie a little bit, my parakeet. He's very activated whenever Raquel comes on. I think he just feels her like magical energy as a little bird. Even as I start talking about her, (laughs) he starts freaking out. So I invite you to listen to this episode with an open heart. Don't read too much into anything. Let our conversation kind of wash over you. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. I understand if some of you might be approaching this with a bit of skepticism, but I have just found that life is way more joyful and fun when you allow a little magic in. So let's dive right into it with my dear friend, Raquel. (laughs) 
Raquel, welcome back to Growing Joy. Oh, always such a pleasure to be here. Love it. It's so funny too, because we we figured this out through the intuitive magic course I just took with you. But Frankie, my parakeet is obsessed with you and your energy. (laughs) And whenever I'm on a Zoom call with you, he always is so vociferous. And from the moment you've popped on for this recording studio we're in, Frankie has been freaking out. So he's going to be more vocal in this interview than in other interviews today, guys. So sit back and relax and enjoy Frankie's chit chat. Enjoy and tell Frankie the feeling is totally mutual. I love hearing him sing. Plus, I think part of it for him is he can, I I hear him, you know, like I can hear what he's trying to say to you. So he knows it. (laughs) Totally. What he's trying to say to me or what he's trying to say to you. I think he really approves of our friendship. I think that's what it is, that he's just so excited that we're talking. He is, but he has a lot of messages for you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm sure. Well, he's a Tweety Bird for sure. He's being a real crazy Tweety Bird right now. Oh, tell him he looks, tell him he looks really handsome. He looks really, tell, just tell him that, that he looks really handsome today. Frankie boy. Frankie, you look so handsome today. What a little handsome boy. Wow. He said, yeah. thank you. Yeah. He is molting. So so he has his pin feathers coming in. So he looks kind of crazy. So maybe he needed a little bit of extra reassurance. That's why. Yes. I was like, that's why he needs us to tell him how handsome <laughs> he is. Okay. That makes sense then. Okay. Totally. <laughs> He's the handsomest boy. Listeners, if you don't know, I have a parakeet. His name is Frankie. He's all over my Instagram. He's bright yellow and green. And he's the love of my life besides my husband. Anyway, (laughs) (laughs) you are our resident green witch. You're our resident planty witch on the Growing Joy podcast. I love having you on the show to dive into the more spiritual aspects of plants. And I am transformed because I just went through your course on uh, intuitive magic, cultivating your intuition and doing so with plants. And I really wanted to have a conversation with you about what we learned because it's just so powerful and potent. And I feel like in a world where we are so encouraged to be disconnected to our intuition in a world where it is so easy for us to not look inward and not tap into our intuition and just mindlessly scroll our way through our lives. It's such a gift to be able to reconnect with yourself. So for those listening who might be like, what are these woo woo hippie chicks talking about? Do you want to first just give a brief introduction to all of the different aspects of the spiritual realm that you are certified in that you, you know, have trained in? And then also, I'd love to just hear what your definition of intuition is. Yeah, well, thank you. Okay, here we go just like a little bit about my background. My training is actually in environmental education. I have a master's in marine biodiversity and conservation. I spent about six years working as a botanical stylist and artist. So my first book came around. That's how you and I met originally, Maria. Yes. But working with plants, as we know, they bring us joy. They bring us happiness. They bring us expansion and growth. And for me, what happened is I was growing joy with plants. I was also growing my spiritual gifts with plants as well. So working with the plants, they actually inspired me to learn more about energy healing. I learned about while working with the plants, I was inspired to plant into some crystals. And then I was like, whoa, I feel a lot of stuff with crystals. So I started studying about crystal healing, got certified as a crystal healer. Then as I was doing that, just interesting things with energy was were coming up. So I got certified in um, certain parts of pranic healing. There's lots of different levels. So I was like level one of pranic healing as I was working with people and working with the plants, I started noticing that I would see things, hear things, know things. And I know I wasn't going crazy. I was very sane, (laughs) but more information was coming into my consciousness. And so during 2020, when things kind of shut down, I started taking some online classes in intuitive development, discovered that not only am I highly psychic and intuitive, I actually am also a medium which in, was wonderful for me writing my second book, Everyday Plant Magic, because I was able to sit in conversation with the plants that I shared about in that book and actually get messages from them to come to all of us as well. Since then, I've also been certified in Reiki. I'm level one, two, and master level certified in Reiki as well. And now I help people connect with their own intuitive gifts through very intentional and magical relationships with nature, including relationships with plants. And I feel like plants are not only a really beautiful 
doorway into reconnection with nature itself. Plants are also a really beautiful doorway into reconnecting with our own souls and our own gift. And when I mean our own gift, it, it is really the gift of intuition. Every single one of us is intuitive. This isn't something that is only some people have it. This is something that is a muscle that every single human has. We, as you mentioned before, Maria, are just not taught how to connect with our intuition. In fact, most of how we are taught to think our way through life really dilutes and dulls our intuitive connection. So I've spent the last four years really learning how to connect back in with my intuitive gifts and kind of creating a bit of a curriculum and a formula around how we can help others learn to exercise this muscle, which is our intuition as well. So when I define intuition, I really do define it as a muscle we all have that allows us to communicate with the more subtle, energetic realities that we exist in. So, you know, when I think about what I do, I really work in the realms of spirit, energy, intuition, and nature. And like those things can all overlap with each other. But intuition is the actual ability. Intuition is like the language. It's like having the language to speak and converse with the universe. Intuition is our ability to be in that conversation. Spirit is the spark of divine consciousness that exists in all things, all conscious things, including you and me and every single plant that we so adore and love to care for and who care for us in return. Energy is the building blocks of every single thing. Everything is made up of energy. And when we know that and when we are in a place where we are in conversation with our own intuition, we are able to read energy. We're able to pick up on things that we wouldn't have had awareness of without this connection with our intuition. And then nature is life. Nature is the cyclical part of life that we exist in. It's the earth, it's the moon, it's the sun, it's the stars, it's the way our earth cycles around the sun and how that is moving through this ever expanding universe and the seasons and that constant change. Nature is the perpetuation of life. <laughs> so, mm. oh my God, Raquel! Yeah. <laughs> and scene. That's the that's the podcast. That's it. We're good. We're done. Bye. <laughs> I'm like closing the show down after this. <laughs> our connection with our intuition gives us this opening to the spiritual, the magical and the natural that is all around us all the time. And I remember when we were in Intuitive Magic, the last session, you said something so poignant, Maria. You said, intuition, it's like, it's like learning a new language. Doing this course, it's really like learning a new language. And that is what it is. Because when we're connecting with our intuition, we're going to be using words. Words will come into play. But so much of this communication is nonverbal. It's somatic, it's felt, it's perceived, it's sensed. So in order for us to connect in with our intuition, we actually have to learn to become more sensitive to the subtle. And I think plants really, really help us with that. Oh my God. I have so many thoughts on the things you just said. I just started taking notes and now they're, they all flew out of my head, but oh my gosh, preach. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes to everything. I think it's very interesting how you say that your intuition is is your connection to the universe because it's like your connection to understanding what your intuition is, like what your inner guidance yeah. is, but also that that inner guidance is in collaboration with God, spirit, universe, Buddha, like whoever your God is, whoever this extra source is, and you can, that's a very personal choice for everyone, but that there is this connection. It could be nature, right? It could be that connection with mother, mother nature, with Gaia, but it's collaborative, which I think is really interesting. And 100%, I felt like when I was working through your course, because your course is so rich in so many different elements of intuition that I remember being like, I need to make flashcards. <laughs> I'm learning a new language to the point that, you know, yeah. like in your, you know, Spanish class or Italian class, you would make flashcards for all the words, all the vocabulary words. I felt like, whoa, I need to make flashcards for all of these things that we're learning because I couldn't believe even at 34, taking the class, highly spiritual. I've read every self-help book in the world. I've, I wrote a self-help book and still 
I was learning about things that were so simple and made so much sense to me, but they were never taught to me in school. And it's so interesting. So, you know, you're an energy worker, you talk about energy. What do you think about the energies of nature and the energies of of humans and our energy? Like, what is this symbiosis that happens when we get in tune with nature and with plants? Imagine that beautiful harmony wafting its way through your home while you sit inside bundled up and warm. It reminds me of the Danish term hygge, spelled H-Y-G-G-E, which is all about creating a warm atmosphere and enjoying the good things in life with good people while being cozy. Whenever I hear my wind river wind chimes waft throughout my home, especially in the winter while I'm bundled up inside, it immediately sets me at ease and reminds me to take a mindful moment with a deep breath. So for today's ad, Wind River Chimes is gifting you a moment of coziness to drop in, take a deep breath, and feel all the warm and cozies. This winter, treat yourself or someone you love to the mindfulness and coziness that comes along with these magical Wind River wind chimes and personalize it. You can use the code GROWINGJOY at windriverchimes.com to get a free engraving to any engravable wind chime to add a special element to your gift. They come in a variety of colors, sizes, and sounds, so head to windriverchimes.com to listen and learn, and don't forget to use code GROWINGJOY at checkout to receive a free engraving. Okay, if you consider yourself a plant nerd, I have a book recommendation for you, plant friends. It's called Simplify Vegetable Gardening by Tony O'Neill of YouTube's very well-known Simplify Gardening. This book is the plant nerd's dream. It integrates botany, biology, and earth science concepts into the subject of food gardening, growing your own food, empowering yourself to grow your own food. Essentially, it's an exciting approach that uses science to grow more food for you and your family. And it utilizes the interconnectedness of Earth's many systems to help your plants thrive, which I think is so on the forefront of the conversation about food, agriculture, growing your own food in society today. The book covers topics like the soil food web's impact on plant nutrition, to the atmosphere's connection to photosynthesis, to the effects of the water cycle on plant transpiration. Plant nerd alert, you hear me? Tony offers a deep dive into the science of growing a robust and sustainable home garden that will empower you to have your best garden yet. It's going to be principles that will carry you through your entire gardening life. Pick up Simplify Vegetable Gardening at your favorite local bookstore, bookshop.org, Barnes Noble, or Amazon.com. That's Simplify Vegetable Gardening by Tony O'Neill, wherever books are sold. Once again, that's Simplify Vegetable Gardening by Tony O'Neill, wherever books are sold to get your plant nerd on. Well, the energy of humans is the energy of nature because we are nature. So what you just described, that that feeling of symbiosis, that is what we are meant to feel because that is who we are. Just as the plants are in symbiotic relationships with the sun and the soil and the mycorrhizae and, you know, like the other plants, we are in symbiotic relationships with all of nature as well. And unfortunately, the last few centuries have created a rift in that the truth of that connection, regardless of whether we are aware of our connection to all of nature or not, we are because we have to breathe and eat and pee and poop and all those things, right? Like we're, we're always connected to nature, but we have this disconnect in our perception now. We have this disconnect in the way we view ourselves and we view nature. And that plays out in a lot of very physical, realistic ways, including what we're dealing with now with environmental destruction and climate change. To me, that is completely a symptom of this misperception of our connection to the natural world. When it comes to cultivating intuition, in harmony with nature, what does that look like? Why do you think it's so important to have both? Well, I think it's an interesting thing. People, you don't have to convince people that spending time in nature makes you feel better, right? Like people just know that. I think most people, and listen, most people like, it's it's intuitive. It's totally intuitive, (laughs) right? But I, you know, listen, of course, if some people have allergies, certain times of year can be more uncomfortable than 
every person is an individual, right? But we all know that if we give ourselves a moment to just go walk on the beach or be in a mount by a mountain stream, like we feel better. We feel physically better. We feel mentally better. We feel emotionally better. And it is an intuitive thing that we know this, but what is actually happening is when we go out into nature, our body has a very physiological response through the nervous system, which takes the nervous system typically out of a place of more higher stress, the sympathetic part of the nervous system, into more relaxation. When we naturally go into a more relaxed state in our nervous system, it very naturally amplifies our intuitive connection because our intuition communicates through our nervous system and through our relationship with our body and with ourself. So anything that we're doing that impacts the nervous system will also have an impact on our intuitive connection. Now, I love what you shared earlier when you said that intuition is also that inner guidance, because yes, our intuition is a conversation with the universe at large, and it's also how we connect in with that inner guidance, that inner guru that exists within each and every one of us that is supposed to be what is kind of leading us, leaving the bread trails for us on this journey of life. It's our intuition that's leaving those breadcrumbs, the universe as well, but it's our intuition that's actually doing that. When you hear the word gut, I had a gut instinct. Is that intuition or is that something else? I love this question. So when I hear people say I have a gut, gut instinct, I actually go to the, to me, that feels more like an instinct versus an intuition. Instinct is an aspect of intuition, but it's not the full encompassing of intuition. Instinct to me is a little bit more um, a physical response and coming at it from like the very body physical response. So it's going to come from an authentic, something real is happening. Listen to that. You know, when you get an instinct, like that's something worth listening to. Intuition is a little bit richer than that. It goes a little bit deeper. There's a level of consciousness that comes into the intuitive, full intuitive uh, connection or intuitive guidance that the instinct is a little bit fast on. But instinct, like imagination, are both key components of intuition. And I think also it depends on the person because... And we can, we can talk about human, I don't want to do, go dive too much into human design here because that could be a totally different podcast, but some of us are meant to make, we have different levels of intelligence in different parts of our body. Our body is extremely intelligent and is in sending us information all day long. Some of us are meant to listen to the guidance and intelligence that does come from the gut region, while some of us are meant to listen to guidance intelligence that comes more from like the solar plexus or more from the heart. And each person's a little different. Most people you hear who say, oh, I've got a gut feeling are tend to going to be people who are more like sacredly activated when it comes to decision making. Oh, my God. Human design. <laughs> Go, everyone. I t- My human design changed my life. I don't talk about it on this podcast because it's not plant related, but go take your human design personality and report back. I'm a 6'2 projector for anybody who knows what human design is. I'm a 4'6 projector. <laughs> Yeah, baby, go projectors. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, I think though, when you were talking about nervous system regulation, I find that when I'm with plants, when I'm in my garden, when I'm watering my house plants, when I'm sitting on my couch with my house plants in the morning with my coffee, I find that that's when I feel the most myself. I'm not in my like monkey mind brain. I'm not overstimulated. I'm not in comparison mode with everybody else. I'm not in my like crazy aggressive Aries-ness. Like I'm just me. I just get to be my pure essence when I'm with, with my plants. And I do feel like their energy helps me tap into my organic, for lack of a better word, essence, my energy. And from there, that's where you're the most open to connecting to your intuition, moving in a very aligned way. Like I find this morning. I had my morning with my coffee and I got the best ideas for my business that I took action on there out of my calendar. But when I allow myself to relax into this space that allows me to be the essence of who I am, that's also where the really good ideas come from. That's where the creativity comes from. That's where the alignment comes from. And then you can move in a place of alignment instead of a place of complete frenetic overwhelm that all of us are stuck in fight or flight that all of us are just stuck in just by nature of existing in 2024 culturally and societally right so 
if people are listening to this episode and like, yes, anding alongside, you know, as I'm just like, preach, Raquel, go. What are some ways that we could use our plants to connect with that source energy, to connect with that intuitive energy and begin our journey on deepening our relationship with our intuition? Oh, wow. Well, first of all, thank you so much for sharing that. I love that. And what you just described, just sitting with your plants open. I mean, that is, <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the first place, right? Is just to sit with them, be aware of them, not be in a rush, not even be in a place where you have to take care of them right? Like you're not watering them. You're not aerating the soil. You're not wiping down leaves. Although those things can be really wonderful ways to connect with them intuitively as well. But just to sit and be present and breathe with the plants is such a beautiful way to connect intuitively. And I want to share one thing really quickly, because I think it's really important when we speak about intuition that we recognize, because you, you stated it so beautifully, Maria. You said, you know, I get these intuitive hits of like, where do I go from here? And what's a good place to focus on? And where do I want to put this passion I have? I think sometimes when people think about intuition and being intuitive, they think about like predicting the future, or even when they think about psychicness, it's like, what's going to happen predicting the future. That's not what our intuition is about. Spirit doesn't even want us to know often what's going to happen in the future. Intuition is about figuring out what's my next right step. What's my next right step? It's like the Frozen 2 movie, right? Right? Like, what? where do I go from here? Because again, we as humans think that we're, gonna, we're taking the steps to get to some kind of destination from the universal perspective and from the perspective of our, our higher self, our spiritual team, God, whatever you want to call it. It's about the growth. It's always about the growth. The soul wants to grow. So everything is the journey. The destination in some ways is death, you know, <laughs> which could be a whole other topic. Um, but to recognize that when we're connecting within our intuition, this isn't about somehow predicting the future, knowing exactly what's going to happen. It's about figuring out what's the next right thing for me to do. What's the next right thing, not only for me to do, but that's going to be best for the collective. Because when we are in alignment with our highest and greatest good, that very naturally aligns with the highest, greatest good for collective, because none of us are alone. We are existing in an interconnected universe on an interconnected planet. All of us are connected with each other and what we do ripples out in many, many ways. So first and foremost, spending time with plants, being aware of them, breathing with them is a fantastic way. Now, for people who actually like to garden and care for plants, learning how to read your plants, even by noticing like, hey, this one looks like it needs more water or Ooh, maybe looks like too much water or signs that we might need to fertilize or even look for pests. Like being able to communicate with plants, as you and I both learned this in the first years we were working with plants too, the subtle communication that is communication with plants is so powerful for our intuitive connections because energy, it's not always subtle, but when we start to read energy and we start becoming really conscious of energy, it is very subtle. It's a little shift that you can feel on one side of your body versus the other. It's coming by a plant and feeling it pull to you a little bit versus walking by another plant that kind of like breezes you right along right? Like it's subtle ways that the plants actually connect and communicate with, with us. And another way that you can actually start really utilizing or acknowledging that you're already utilizing your intuition is when you're connecting with plants or when you're even looking at a tree for you to recognize that that is you in conversation with that plant. When you're looking at a tree, it's not just because I think that tree is pretty. That tree is called out to you and ask for you to make a connection with it, which is why you are now looking at a tree and breathing and being like, wow, this tree's making me feel calm. This tree's making me feel grounded. This tree's making me feel strong. That's intuitive connection and communication. It's already happening. And I think most of us, because intuition can be very subtle, I think many of us are sitting around waiting for it to be like, I see a spirit come out of a tree and it flies over to me with its fairy wings and whispers into my ear. And I'm not saying people might not see that or might not be happening. I'm saying that's not how our intuition connects and communicates with us. It's in whispers most often until we learn to cultivate and develop it and grow it. And then sometimes we'll hear it a lot louder. Typically, it's in these small whispers that sound like our own voice. It's in 
a flower that we just can't take our eyes off of. It's in that bird that passes by right when we're having a thought that uplifts our heart. This is how we communicate with intuition, is being aware of the world around us and how that world is making us feel when we are present with it. And plants are amazing for that. All right, plant friends. So if we want our plants to thrive, if we want ourselves to thrive alongside our plants, we need our plants to thrive. And in order to get that to happen, we need to set them up for success with high quality potting mix, soil, fertilizer, and more, right? And that's where Espoma Organic will enter your life and take such good care of you. I've been using Espoma Organic for years now. My All of my plants are potted up in their line of potting mixes. They have specific potting mixes for different types of plants. So they have like a succulents and cacti mix that my succulents and my lime tree are potted in. They have a general mix that most of my house plants are potted in. They have an orchid mix. They have an African violet mix. If you want to get fancy, recently I've been experimenting with using their general potting mix and then adding a bit of the orchid mix into it for a chunkier mix for my aeroids. I love their liquid houseplant fertilizer. It's what introduced me to this brand that had me loving it so much that kind of introduced me to all the other stuff that I use of there now. I use it in the morning when I water my plants. It's a very gentle fertilizer, so you can use it all the time or you can just use it in the growing season, but it's super simple. So it's a liquid fertilizer that you literally just pour a cap of into your watering can and then you just water everything. It makes it so easy. There's no mess, no muss, no fuss. And if you're an outdoor gardener, Espoma has everything you need for your entire gardening journey from their high quality seed starting mix to their potting mixes, to their garden soil and their compost. Whether you're an in-ground gardener, grow bag gardener, raised bed gardener, they have like the curated mix and compost and fertilizer for anything and everything you're growing. And not only do they have amazing organic products, but their manufacturing facilities are 100% solar powered and they use bio preferred packaging. I love Espoma Organic. (laughs) To learn more about their indoor and outdoor products, you can visit espoma.com to see where your local Espoma dealers are. Or you can click the link in my show notes to go to my Amazon storefront where I have a curated list of my Espoma favorites. Thanks, Espoma. Something that is important to frame this conversation as well, which was something I thought about a lot while I was taking your course, was it's also kind of a perspective change. It's a perspective opening of allowing yourself to in this moment when crow flies across my my vision or in this moment where a flower, let's keep it plants, the flower in my garden draws me in and pulls me and I'm just like mesmerized by it and I'm having a moment with it. In that moment, you can choose, do I want to let this be magical or do I want to let this just be nothing? And I think a decision that I that I realized I made in part in being in your class is, you know, I want it to be magical. And Because there are so many people that are going to say, oh, that's bullshit, or oh, that's coincidence, or oh, that's happenstance, that's not intuitive, that's not anything. And that's fine if that's how they want to live their life. But I'm choosing to live my life through a magical lens and through this connection to a larger something lens. And I would love to be surprised and delighted by the universe on a daily basis. I invite that in. And I think a lot of your course is just allowing yourself to open up to the possibility of, oh, what if this moment that I'm looking at, what if this moment I'm having with my plant is more than just me watering my plant? What if it's actually something deeper and richer than that? And life is so much more beautiful. Like life has been so much more beautiful since I've opened up to that in the positives and the negatives. I've gone through some really dark places in this last year with my melanoma diagnosis, with some personal stuff I've gone through and allowing myself to view all of this through this magical lens of there's a communication here, there's a lesson here, there's a what's the next best aligned step has been so much more enjoyable. So as we dive into these practices that I want to ask Raquel about, I just, I really encourage the listeners to allow your mind to be open by some of these things that we'll talk about because it's fun and because it's beautiful. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, and I want to share, not only is it fun and beautiful, it's also healthy. It's also healthy because what happens is what, what you're describing when you just talked about, you have more capacity for this amazing joy, but also more capacity for sorrow and pain. What you are describing is you're increasing the capacity of your nervous system 
of your ability to regulate and hold more charge in your body. Charge is energy, right? Like feelings are energy. Everything is energy. And so what you're describing is a nervous system regulation approach. And when we actually regulate our nervous system and help our bodies cope with stress, which we're always going to have stress, like we need to have a sympathetic nervous system. We need to have a fight or flight response as much as we need to have a rest and digest. Otherwise, we would never get anything done. Right? We need both, but we need to be able to go between them. And most unfortunately, in the, our modern society, they have the way that life is currently playing out has us very much dominated in our sympathetic fight or flight. And it's difficult for many of us to go into rest or digest. Or when we get into rest, sometimes it's really hard for us to get back out of it. Depression, overwhelm, things like that. And so being able to go back and forth, what you're describing is actually really healthy. So when we allow ourselves to open to this magic of the world, we actually open to greater health in our bodies in so many ways. Another thing that's really interesting about this is is as an energy worker, when you start to open to the magic of the world and you start to feel more in your body, you actually take in more energy. And when I'm talking about energy in this way, I mean capital E energy, prana, chi, ki, mana, ruach, whatever you want to use to call that one word. That is vital life force energy that pretty much is flowing at all times to all of us. Most of us don't take it in. If you think of energy as this constant faucet that's just running, most of us are walking around with umbrellas open and all of that energy is just going off the sides, not coming in. But when we're open to energy and when we're open to nature, we actually start taking that energy in. And that's one of the things plants really help us do. And that's what plants really helped me do when I first started working with them. And I think same for you too, Maria, right? Like both you and I had this entry into plants from a place of mental health need. I was in a deep place of anxiety and depression and (laughs) eco-phobia. big fear about just the future and environmental destruction. Even though I had this extremely powerful relationship with nature, I wasn't letting in anything. I was closed off. And when I started working with the plants, especially making art with the plants, I started opening and I started feeling my body taking in this life force energy. And now this is something I do all day, almost all day long, every day. And being able to feel in my body what it feels like to pull in energy from a tree, to connect in with the mycelium network and pull that energy into my body is so magical and so empowering and really, really wonderful for my immune system too. Even now, I mean, I caught COVID last week. I'm five days past. All I feel like right now is I have a runny nose. I feel like my body is able to heal in a much faster way because of this connection I have with nature and the energy of nature and using that energy of nature. And the plants were the ones who taught me how to do that. So how do we work with the energy of plants, right? (laughs) So many. Yeah. Thinking about, you know, the different listeners that we have listening in, we have some people in very urban environments where they probably have houseplant collections, but not an outdoor garden. We have others that have thriving gardens and don't have as many houseplants. We have a lot of people in the middle. So can you maybe give a couple of different activities that people could do to connect with plants, connect with their intuition, just as a way to get started? Yeah, let's start from like the least amount of access to like live plants to the most. (laughs) So let's say you're in a very urban setting. You don't have access even to houseplants from where you're at. You can actually go onto YouTube and put on just a video with birdsong in the background. That's just videos of you moving through forests, moving through trees. That in itself will have an impact on your nervous system on your brain, on your energy, and with consciousness, even looking at a screen and taking in the views of a forest, you can start breathing in the energy and connecting energetically with that energy and breathe that into your body. So we are here, all of us are here on earth. I don't think I'm talking to anyone on the International Space Station. So if I am, cool, thank you. Um, (laughs) But all of us here on earth are able to connect in with the energies of earth no matter where we are. 
this is where imagination is very, very powerful when it comes to our intuitive and energetic development. So even if you are stuck up in a cubicle on the 17th floor on a building in New York City and you don't have a house plant and all you want to do is connect with the energy of plants, close your eyes or just put that visual on your screen, breathe in the energy of the forest a few times and you will be connecting with that energy and pulling it into your body. When it comes to like, let's say you are someone who has a lot of house plants, which I know you were when you were living in New York, right? I am surrounded by house plants. House plants are such powerful ways to start connecting in with the energy of plants and your own intuition. One of my favorite things to do when I first started to kind of learn energy work was to feel the aura of my plants. And what you can do there is take your hands, rub them together, get them warm. So you can get your energy going, bring your hands further apart so you can feel your own energy aura. So it feels like a little bit of a pushback. Like if you bring your hand closer to your body, when you hit your aura, it'll feel like a little bit of like a rubbery, like pushback, or it might feel like a cool breeze. You'll feel something and that's your aura. So you can actually go over to your plants, rubbing your hands together and just bringing your hand. And I have a plant right above my computer here. So bringing, <laughs> this one's got a, a large aura um, and bringing your hand out around your plant and just being like, what do I feel? Often with plants, what I feel is this cool breeze coming against my hand. Sometimes it pulls my hand in like the plant wants me to touch it. Sometimes it keeps it right where it's at. Sometimes I'll feel a little dampness right here in my wrist. And every time I feel dampness in my wrist, the plant is telling me, don't water me. I am wet in my roots. So when I feel that, I actually usually check the soil because sometimes I might have overwatered <laughs> when I do that. But that's really helped me because I think sometimes as a plant parent, you're always like, just water, just water, just water without always checking to make sure your plant needs water. So, you know, reading the plant's aura like that has actually been a way for me to check in with my plants. Like, are you actually thirsty or not? Cool thing to do when you're doing this with your plants. If you notice all of a sudden you're kind of touching your plants and you feel very thirsty, your plant's probably thirsty. If all of a sudden you feel really hungry, it might be time for some fertilizer for your plants, right? But really to just start feeling what energy is coming off your plant is the first step to start building that intuitive connection because you're starting to feel subtleties of energy and that's where it begins. That's where it begins. So if you have house plants, when you're doing caring for them, when you're wiping them down, aerating them, watering them, also talk to them. They hear you. They see us. I don't know if you've seen any of the science recently about how they're able to tell that plants actually like see us can like see us and know when we're around. Oh my gosh, it's fascinating. And that'll be something I want to share when, I, when you're actually out in nature, like with a tree. I'll share a little something you can do with the trees with that. So that's a really great way when you have house plants. Now, if you're going to do your own garden, if you're gardening, one of the best ways I love to connect in intuitively with the garden is through the root system itself and the mycelium network. Because when we're gardening, when we plant a plant and then we plant another plant next to it and another plant next to that, ultimately those plants are going to connect and communicate underneath through their roots with that symbiotic relationship they have with the fungi and bacteria within the root structure, which creates this beautiful web of life known as the mycelium network. You guys don't know about it. Learn about it. It's fascinating. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> so... I've done numerous guided meditations where I literally connect my energetic roots in with that mycelium network and just let that flood my body. And I can't even tell you just the amount of love that floods my body when I feel the network really connect in with me. It's extremely powerful. And it also helps us remember the interconnection that we all truly have. Not only the interconnection of the plant world, but the interconnection of all of nature. We're all interconnected here on this planet. And then another, one of my favorite ways to utilize and keep growing my intuitive connection with plants right now is talking with trees. You're such a tree lady. Oh my God, I love trees so much. <laughs> I always have. And I don't, I mean, I don't, you know, my, my maiden mm -hmm. name is from the forest. So I think that makes a lot of sense. But I used to just go, when I first started talking to trees, it was really just about listening to them. And so whenever I teach people about talking to trees, the first thing you want to do is just find a tree you want to connect with. I recommend doing this at the start physically, because I think you'll just feel it more 
strongly. And then the more you do this, the more you can do this, even just from your mind, you don't even actually have to be next to the tree, you can just think of a tree and connect with it. But start off, go next to a tree that calls to you or the tree that you love. Place one hand on your heart, one hand on the tree. First, feel your own heartbeat, which for some people can take some time to actually feel their own heartbeat. That level of interoception can actually be difficult for some people. So even giving yourself a moment to breathe and find your heartbeat is an intuitive practice because it takes you into your inner experience, okay? So that alone is an intuitive practice to find your heartbeat. And then once you find your own heartbeat, feel your hand on the tree and feel for the pulse of energy coming from the tree. I call it the tree's heartbeat. It could be the xylem and phloem and whatever it might be, but it's a pulse of energy. Once I feel that pulse of energy in my hand, then I ask the tree for connection. And I just, when I would start off, I would just stand there and receive. For me, first, when we first start talking to trees, it's really about learning to listen to trees. I think most of us have no trouble going over and just like talking to a tree. <laughs> um, I know I've done that ever since I was a little kid. And in fact, I always tell people like, if you're having trouble sharing your truth, go tell it to a tree or go tell it to a plant. Because when it comes to especially activating the third chakra, it doesn't matter if our truth is received. It just matters that we're expressing it, right? So go tell it to a plant because they're not going to judge you or fight back or get all defensive or whatever it might be. <laughs> so first start out hand on heart, hand on tree, and just be open to whatever comes in. Trees communicate to us in numerous ways. Typically, it'll be through emotion or a felt sensation, which is a clairsentient type of intuitive connection when we feel something. Sometimes they will show us images, like very fast images in our mind that would be considered clairvoyance or clear sight. We might hear something like the rustling of weeds. We might hear a word pop into our head. Trees can send us words as well. Sometimes you might even see a word flash before your eyes. You might see a color come in behind your closed eyes. This is all ways that the trees are communicating, which is also ways that our intuition communicates with us as well. Now, the more you communicate with trees, the more information you're able to get from them until you get to a point where you can have a full conversation with them. My favorite conversation that I do with trees right now, that is also a practice that I love for my own intuitive connection and continued intuitive development, because I don't think any of us, no matter if you've been working in the intuitive field for 40 years, 50 years, I don't think we are ever going to know everything. I don't think that's the point. I think there's constantly more to unfurl and learn and grow through. That being said, when I go talk to the trees now, my favorite conversation to have with them is once I make that connection, that energetic connection. And another way to energetically connect is you can do through the roots as well, is I ask the tree, tell me about you. Give me a few words to describe your personality. And I don't have a better word for personality than personality, but the tree knows what I mean. <laughs> and typically they give me like three to four words. Like sometimes it'll be, I had one tree that told me, I am the one who watches. It was very, it was very like strong about it. I was like, ooh, like this tree was very vocal. Um, but usually they give me like a four words that kind of are like, this is my essence. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. And then I'm like, okay, thank you for letting me see you. And then I asked the tree, how do you see me? What do I look like to you? What is my energy to you? And then I have the tree share with me how they're perceiving me. And that has been so profound for me and so inspiring and I started doing this practice a few months ago, probably like six, seven months ago at a time when I was really having a hard time seeing myself clearly. And I kept asking my spirit guide team. And like, that's what I was asking for is please help me see myself with the clarity you see me. And then I started having these conversations with the trees. And uh, if you have the opportunity to go ask a tree how it sees you and you can actually receive the answer, it is one of the quickest ways to get to a place of self-love because they see us in such beauty. Even when we're in places of like complete confusion, they see us with such beauty. So that's one of my favorite ways to continue to use the plants for my own intuitive connection and also just to get their wisdom and their guidance because they are sentient, wise beings, especially trees. Most of them are way older than any of us. Not all, especially depending where you live, but where mm -hmm. you live, for sure, Maria. <laughs> yeah, old. They're old. 
It reminds me of, I think the movie is Avatar, yes. where like they have their plug, their tail or their, it comes out of their head that they can plug in the plants, like plugging into the plants to receive their wisdom. I freaking love that. And I might try that with one of my house yes. plants too. Like even just connecting with the energy of the plant, hearing my own heartbeat. That sounds like a beautiful practice. You have so much wisdom, Raquel. I'm so excited for you because I feel like I've obviously known you for a while. I've watched you go from teaching succulent crowns to teaching intuitive magic. I'm so lucky that I got to go through your course this last time around, intuitive magic. It is so rich. I mean, I wish for everyone to take this course because... I just feel like a better evolved version of myself after. And I've let so much more magic into my life after taking it. So I know you're opening enrollment for another round. Tell us, for anyone who wants to come learn with you, tell us more about the course and where people can come sign up. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, first, thank you, first of all, for those amazing words. It was incredible having you in this last round. One of the things I love about this course is I keep it pretty small. I take a maximum of 10 participants so that we do feel like we're in true community. And the kinds of roots we create with each other last beyond the program. And so we create this community of interwoven, typically women that come to this course, but men are more than welcome, (laughs) that transcends the actual program and becomes a beautiful web of like-minded, like-spirited souls who are traveling a path of alignment together, which is really beautiful. So we'll be opening doors at the end of the month, January 25th, for the third round of Intuitive Magic. This is a 10-session live group coaching program. We'll meet, this time around, we'll be meeting on Sunday mornings. We'll be meeting for two hours every time we meet. So this is over 20 hours of live instruction. Each session has content, rich content, as Maria shared. Rich content. It's all paired with immersive, energetic practices and abilities to do intuitive reads. So we're always pairing information and content with embodiment and practice. Those things go hand in hand. I have a very powerful mind, so I actually need to feed my mind content in order to go into more embodiment practices. And I find that people who are attracted to me tend to have similar things where we like to feed the mind in order to then come back into the body. So we'll be starting this round at the end of February. I believe it's February 25th, right around the Virgo full moon is when we'll be starting. And we'll be meeting on Sundays for two and a half hours. No, two hours. Sometimes we go two and a half. If we're doing group reads, we sometimes go a little over. And it's probably one of my favorite things that I do right now. I just, the people who join this program are so heart-centered, are so powerful, and are so ready to unleash their magic for themselves and for the world. We talk about the clear abilities. We go into energetic vibration. We talk about the chakra system. We go into somatics and the nervous system. We talk about language. We dive into spiritual signs like numerology and tarot and animals. We work with the plants and how to connect and communicate with plants. We learn how to use nature as a battery for our own energy. We talk about ethics. We talk about crossing the veil and mediumship. I mean, we dive deep and we practice with all of it. (laughs) It is so rich. It is amazing. I had such a good time. And also I just want to like the other people in the class are so special. Like even just the little sisterhood that we had in that class was so special. I'm still connected with multiple women from the class now that it's been it closed for a couple of months. And yeah, it's just it's such a great mind opener. And also, I love that you're starting it in February, because it will base you'll move into spring through it, which feels kind of magical for you to start in this like winter cocoon and move through spring's awakening, like in the course feels so magical. So where can everyone go to sign up for the class? Yes. Thank you. So to sign up for the class, you can head over to my new website, which is ourinfinitenature.co. If you hit under intuition, so under work with me, you'll see intuition. If you hit there, you'll see another thing just for intuitive magic and you can find information there. But starting on January 25th, I'll also be sharing it all over social media too. So I'm sure you can find it there too. And you can now you found me on social media. I had a little bit of a rebrand. So I used to be at Infinite Succulents. But starting now, I am at our infinite nature, Raquel. I'm sure if you plug in infinite succulent, it'll direct you to me still. But this is the time for the rebrand. So 
putting all that out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited for you. And I'm excited for anybody who takes the class because I truly feel like it was one of the highlights of my 2023 And I love you, friend. You're going to be back on the show multiple times this year. So plant friends, we hope you enjoy these deep spiritual dives. Uh, We have more coming for you soon. And um, yeah, congrats on this next launch. And I'm so excited for you. Thank you. And I love you too. And I mean, I could talk with you for hours. We do. We do all the time. We do. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Raquel. I just love her. And I feel like every time we talk, it's just my heart just feels so safe and secure with her. But I just love her connection to nature and her her deep mission to get us all reconnected to nature to save the planet. She's amazing. And I hope you try one of the practices that we talked today. I cannot recommend her course, Intuitive Magic More. I enjoyed it so much. It's 10 weeks. It's intense. It attracts the most magical people into it. So we're in the show notes, or you can go to her website, Our Infinite Nature, to sign up for the course. It starts at the end of this month. I'm so excited. Raquel is going to be coming back onto the podcast several times this year for some seasonal episodes, like tied to the changing of the seasons and how we can root into the changing of the seasons, which I'm really excited about. And she's just the greatest. I'm so thankful for her friendship. So you can go follow her at Our Infinite Nature. I hope this episode just like opened your eyes and opened your heart and maybe softened your heart a little bit as an invitation to soften into your plant care in a way that maybe you haven't before. I can only speak from personal experience, but man, it feels really good on my end. So you've got plenty of food for thought right now. Until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you for tuning in today. It means so much to me that I get to be part of your planty journey. If you like what you heard, make sure you're subscribed to the show so you never miss an episode. We have so many incredible interviews and solo episodes on incredible houseplant and gardening topics that you will not want to miss this year. And while you're over there in the podcast player subscribing, why don't you click over to the review section of Growing Joy with Plants and leave us a review. Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so thanks in advance. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got so many options for you. First, I highly recommend you taking the Plant Parent Personality Test. It's free, it's super fun, it takes three minutes to complete. At the end of the test, you're gonna get your Plant Parent Personality Profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you and your lifestyle, inspired by your results. The links are in the show notes. If you're looking to uplevel your Plant Parent game, I have so many free downloads on my website that I think could help you, like the Understanding Natural Light download or nine different ways to green up your office space. If you'd like to support the show monetarily and help me bring the show to as many people as possible for free, you can head to our Patreon link in the show notes to learn more about our offerings. And finally, I invite you to come hang out with me and continue the planty conversation on social media, on Instagram and TikTok. I'm growing joy with Maria. My DMs are always open if you have requests for topics or ideas for the show. Thank you again for listening. It is truly my honor and delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy.